one technique that has helped me create six-figure trading strategies, Monte Carlo simulations. But what is it and how do you do the same? Here's everything you need to know explained simply. I'm Anir, also known as Ghost of Trades, and I also run Unbiased Trading, an agency where we can backtest or automate your strategy. Now, what are Monte Carlo simulations? Monte Carlo simulations is simply a powerful statistical technique to model the probability of different outcomes. At its core, it performs a risk analysis by resequencing the historical trades of a backtest. It keeps doing this for hundreds of iterations. This is something called random sampling. And random sampling is used to generate multiple possible outcomes and calculate the average result. So take, for example, the calculation of the probability of rolling two standard dice. Well, if you wanted to calculate this probability the brute force way, you would have to roll the dice a whole bunch, say 36,000 times. If we consider that there are six sides to a dice, we have two of them, and we want to run this a thousand times to get a good sample size. But with a Monte Carlo simulation, we can reduce the number of rolls by randomly sampling the possible outcomes, knowing there are 36 combination of dice rolls, and calculating the percentage of times that we get, say, a seven. Now, number two, who uses them? There are a number of common applications for Monte Carlo simulations, and perhaps the most well-known of those is in the area of just portfolio management, and also in the area of investment planning. By running thousands or even millions of simulations, investors can get a better idea of how their portfolio might perform under different market conditions. And other common applications are things like risk analysis, option pricing, and planning for spare capacity. It does this by using two key methods. Reshuffle method, this involves randomly reordering the historical trades of a strategy. This method maintains the same results as the original backtest as the start and end point, but reveals variations in drawdowns and profitability and other path dependent metrics. Here's an example you can see. So you can see there's a lot of variation around this, and some are even going below zero, meaning that they completely blew up the strategy. So for this particular Monte Carlo, I'd be pretty worried. Ideally, you never want to see a variation go below zero, meaning that it blew up the full account. Um, even though it did recover here, it still wouldn't be something I'm very happy with because that drawdown uh, obviously is, is incredibly large. Next is the resample method. This is similar to reshuffling, but trades are selected randomly with replacement. So what that means is, let's say you have 100 uh, backtest historical trades, uh, and it's going to be picking any one of those at random, and it could be picking the same ones multiple times. So it could pick your worst loser twice or three times, and then that would be an equity curve, and you could see how that kind of performs overall. Alongside these two ma main methods, there is randomized, permutation, and parametric. Um, those are a bit more nuance, I guess, and I think these two are the most common that you'll probably use as a Monte Carlo. Now, here is an example re Monte Carlo. It's of the same strategy, so we can both see in both of them that it's going below zero in some cases, which is really not a good sign overall, especially for this many. Maybe if there was one, you know, uh, one equity curve, that would be a bit of a different story, but still, um, this is a lot of them are going below zero, which is not a good sign. Obviously, we're getting huge variation from the actual um, equity curve itself, which is the middle black line, um, which is Ideally, not what you want to see. You obviously are going to always see variation in a Monte Carlo just because it's doing different sequencing of those traits. But ideally, you'd love to see it a bit more tight, um, meaning just that it, over that historical time, even with these trades reshuffled around, it still performed very similarly. Um, so that'd be at least the goal. But why is this all important? These simulations help give us a gauge of the potential true drawdown a strategy may face live. In contrast, a single backtest only reveals one possible drawdown, which could be the result of a fortunate trade sequencing. I think this holds so much strength when you're doing backtesting, because a lot of times, that first run on that historical data, yes, that's great to see, um, but in reality, when you take a strategy live, you're never going to know what the next trade is, and you never know the sequencing of those trades. So the sequencing of those trades really does matter, and you want to see that even when reshuffled around, that they still hold a good performance. And most importantly, that they don't completely blow up and the, uh, the actual drawdown is still manageable. Many times, you'll maybe backtest a strategy and the drawdown will be, let's say, 5%. But on a Monte Carlo, it'll be 15 or 20. Now, that is sort of to be expected. You'd always expect really a higher drawdown on your Monte Carlo than your normal backtest. If you don't, then that's very strange. Um, however, you 
need to be comfortable as well with the possibility of that Monte Carlo max drawdown. Um, so ideally, you you know, if it's maybe the Monte Carlo one's 20%, personally for me, that's something I can still sort of handle. It's on definitely on the edge of where I no longer want to trade that strategy. Uh, but around 20% and under, I'm pretty happy with to at least handle as a drawdown as a max case, you know, scenario. Now, here's also an example of other things you can look at on a Monte Carlo. Um, so you can see the Sharpie ratio differences on the equity curves. You obviously see the max drawdown. Um, and you see the 95th percent uh, max drawdown, you have the volatility, um, all those sort of ones, which are really great to look at those performance metrics and see how they are distributed um, depending on obviously those equity curves being reproduced, whether that be resample or, or reshuffle. Now, this analysis also offers a clear view of strategy performance metrics, so you can look into the amount of consecutive wins and losses. The reason why I normally look at this is because I would say one of the biggest things I've, when I've talked to other traders, when they're starting to get into backtesting, a huge part of the decision-making that comes when you're managing a strategy and you haven't done a backtest is your worst point is when going to be when you lose five times in a row, six times in a row, three times in a row. Those are going to be the points where most people break and either decide to change the strategy, stop trading the strategy, get really nervous and, you know, put size really small, um, all those sort of things which is purely an emotional decision. You've just taken a you know X amount of losses in a row and that scared you and that's why you're making that emotional reaction. Whereas with you ha when you have a back test or you have a Monte Carlo, for example, as well, you could really get an idea of what the average consecutive wins and losses will be. You could then even see what's the longest amount of losses you've ever had in a row based on that Monte Carlo, for example. And that sort of information, whether it be very small, like it's not necessarily a huge amount of information you're getting, it can be very powerful because it will help you in those times where you are maybe potentially thinking about changing the strategy because of those losses. Uh, and this can give you better perspective, really. That's all really it is. And it's helped me tremendously on so many strategies. Um, the average consecutive losses is always bigger than what you would think. Uh, for a lot of people, I think maybe after three or four, you're thinking, wow, that's a, that's a lot of consecutive losses in a row. This strategy is probably no longer working. Um, but on most strategies, at least from my back testing, obviously it's dependent on strategy type and characteristics as well. But normally I would say three to four, maybe even five is quite average um, of the amount of consecutive losses you could get in a row. So more when you're getting to that tail end and when you're getting to maybe seven or you know eight, that's really quite worrying. But uh, apart from that, uh, you should really just do a back test on a Monte Carlo and you can kind of get that really useful information. Uh, as of other ones, you can obviously look at annual volatility, which is great to know of how much returns could volatilate between that year or just even the drawdowns, etc. You can also look at win rate. Win rate, I find useful simply just because I like to view win rate as sort of the strength of the predictive signal. Now, that's not necessarily true if you're doing like a, um, a low win rate, high R strategy. Uh, it's, most of the time, I'm more doing higher win rate uh, strategies. Um, so I like to look at win rate and see how that's affected over time. Uh, that also helps me understand maybe when a strategy is no longer working, if the win rate has severely dropped. For These can all provide a more realistic expectation of running the strategy live. So as a quick roundup, Monte Carlo simulations help you understand how sequencing and luck impact your backtesting results, leading to more robust strategies and improved risk analysis. Realistic expectations of a strategy hold a lot of value when you run into a drawdown live. Now, I just want to focus a bit more on that last sentence. I know it's a really quick sentence on Twitter, but this has been such a huge part of why I've been able to hold onto a strategy is because of these robustness tests. A lot of times people don't want to speak about it on Twitter, but you know, drawdowns happen. Like I, I know a great friend of mine, he, uh, he does crypto and he was in a drawdown, I think for maybe it was a couple of, I might've misspoke around a couple of months, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's around that. And he was pretty much unfazed. He had done amazing backtesting. He had done amazing robustness tests. He had done Monte Carlo's, et cetera. And he knew that was to be expected. So he was fine. He obviously it was uncomfortable, but he wasn't, you know, changing the strategy. He wasn't stopping it. He wasn't putting on super low sides or something like that. Um, and it's just really, once you have seen the effect of proper backtesting, that's what can really allow you to have better conviction in your trading. And that's normally why I say like conviction is such a huge part of trading and having all these tests and putting that time and energy into these tests um, does really help build that up compared to if you just take a strategy off a blog and you know implement it, uh, there's a lot more worry there of where you have no idea and no data and no perspective on what could be 
you know, average or normal for that particular strategy. Now, do keep in mind, this is simply one technique. There are definitely more techniques to conduct a really good strategy development, such as parameter sensitivity, out of sample, walk forward optimization, etc. cetera. Um, but this is definitely a key one I think every trader should know and try and implement if they can. Now, as one last note, I did get a question uh, around, could you just use an online uh, Monte Carlo simulator where you just enter in the win rate and R and I think it just spits out basically um, the Monte Carlo. It's not a bad idea. I'd say if you can't do anything else, then yeah, I think that's an okay use of it. I wouldn't say it's ideal. Uh, it's not incredibly realistic. Yes, it's using the key characteristics of the win rate and R, same as uh, what a Monte Carlo would be. But ideally, when you're doing a resampling, for example, you really want to be doing it that off the historical trades themselves of that particular strategy. It's just going to be a lot more accurate and a lot more representative of the actual strategy that could be you know, happening in the future based on that resequencing. Um, so that's at least my just small take on it. I think it can help if you have nothing else. Uh, but personally, I, I try and do a proper Monte Carlo. Now, if you'd like more of this kind of content every single week, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Ghost of Trades. Otherwise, uh, you can subscribe and uh, have a great rest of your day.